Lewis County, located 72 miles southwest of Nashville, is named after Meriwether Lewis, who died there in 1809, just three years after the completion of the famous Lewis and Clark Expedition. The county seat of Lewis County is Hohenwald, a town of 3,757 people and 11 elephants. The Elephant Sanctuary's Discovery Center is open to the public and is located in the heart of downtown Hohenwald. The elephants are located on a spacious and secluded reserve a few miles away. My name is Todd Montgomery and I'm the Operations and Outreach Manager here at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. I've been in this position for about eight years now. The Elephant Sanctuary was founded in 1995, so 26 years ago now, and we were founded as a home for elephants that were retired from performance and exhibition, captive elephants living in North America uh, who we felt needed a place where they could uh, be themselves, where they could exercise choice every day with, with who they wanted to spend time with and where they wanted to go, and to have the room to move around and the, the natural environment to hopefully feel a bit more like wild elephants. So our, our job here at the Elephant Sanctuary in Hohenwald is to give these retired elephants uh, an opportunity to live a life that is more akin to what a wild elephant might have in, in parts of, of Africa or Asia. So every day uh, we try to provide these elephants with herd, home, rest, refuge, and individualized care for life. The Elephant Sanctuary is an accredited sanctuary. We are accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. And as a sanctuary, the elephant's 2,700 acre habitats are really just for the elephants. The only people who interact or really even see the elephants are our caregivers and our veterinarians. The Elephant Sanctuary is home to 11 elephants retired from performance and exhibition. Of those 11, seven are Asian elephants and four are African savanna elephants. What many people don't realize is there are different elephant species. When you and I use the word elephant, we're actually referring to a family of animals and not just one species. And within that family, there are different members, different uh, individual animals, in our case, the Asian elephant and the African elephant. Now, these two elephants are related, but they are very different from one another. They communicate in different ways. They have different feeding patterns. They live in different wild habitats in different parts of the world. And here at our sanctuary, on our 2,700 acres, we have separate habitats for the African elephants and for the Asian elephants because in the wild, those species would never ever cross paths. And at the sanctuary, in keeping with our, our model of trying to recreate as much of the wild as we can, the African elephants and the Asian elephants don't cross paths here either. We give each their own habitat with other members of their own species with whom they can, with whom they can socialize. We've had 28 elephants since our founding in 1995. Uh, sadly, elephants don't live forever, and so we do have to say goodbye from time to time. And also new elephants uh, arrive. If, a, if a, a circus decides to close or decides to stop touring, they can bring their elephants to retire with us. If a zoo decides that it wants to close its elephant exhibit, they can contact us and we'll provide a home for that elephant. In some cases, the authorities, the, the police or the animal control or the federal government even, they may step in and decide that an elephant needs a, a better home and they'll make the decision for that elephant to come and live with us. So our population varies a bit from time to time. So here at the Elephant Sanctuary, we, we look forward to the holidays, but maybe for, for a different reason than what a lot of people do. Uh, many folks look forward to the, to the end of the year. We look forward to the beginning of the year because that is when we receive a lot of Christmas trees, uh, trees that are, are donated from, from friends and, and neighbors and communities really all over the, the state we're finding out. And we love to take those trees because we turn them into enrichment items for the elephants. Elephants are herbivores. They, they are plant eaters and Christmas trees are in fact uh, a type of plant. And so the elephants do utilize the trees as a food source. They'll eat the, the needles and the smaller branches. They'll, they'll chew away the, the bark. And even more so than that, uh, they will interact with the trees. Residents of Teleco Village participate in the Christmas tree donation program under the leadership of Linda Parker, who is an animal lover and the president of the Teleco Village Naturalist Club. Started this last year, I had my one tree, and I thought, 
four hours to go and donate it to the elephant sanctuary is a bit much for one tree, so I decided to put it on next door and ask other people to join in, and this year I did again, and now we've got we're close to 40 trees. This is amazing. We've actually quadrupled the number of donations this year, and hopefully we will have another trailer next year. Very happy to be part of an event that allows elephants and wildlife to not only have food to eat, but uh, have uh, Christmas trees. Came together today with Linda and her crew to uh, package up these trees and send them off uh, for a very, very worthy cause. After the holidays, residents of Teleco Village donated their Christmas trees by bringing them to the community gardens located near the Wellness Center. The trees were loaded onto a trailer the day before they were to be delivered to Hohenwald. On January 15th, volunteers made the four-hour drive to the Elephant Sanctuary. So we have seen the elephants interact with these donated trees in a number of ways. Sometimes using our, our live streaming Ellie cams, the, the cameras that provide streams into the habitat that allow us to observe the elephants, sometimes we catch things that we weren't expecting. The first year that we had one of our Christmas tree drives, we observed an elephant named Minnie do something that we really hadn't seen before. She would pick up one of the, one of the donated Christmas trees, which is much easier for an elephant to do than for you and I, and she would hold that tree at the top of her head and then she would let it go and the tree would roll down from the, the crown of her head down to her back and then it would fall just you know where her, where her tail was and then she'd pick it up and she would repeat that process and she spent about half an hour just picking up that tree and rolling it down her back we've seen other elephants you know bat the trees around with their trunks and with their feet uh, again the elephants will, will feed on the trees sometimes we'll add additional food items uh, hay or, or fruits and vegetables we'll sort of hide those in the trees as well and the elephants will use their trunks to, to investigate so elephants are, are very very intelligent animals and anything that we can do to enrich their day-to-day -day lives, to give them something new to, to touch, to, to feel, to experience, some new part uh, of their habitat is, is a way to give elephants a new experience. And we know that that is a, um, a healthy part of, of the elephant's natural lives. So each elephant is an individual and, and as such has her own favorite individual treats. We have some elephants who love bananas. We have some elephants, not so much. A really interesting thing that we do in the summertime is we will create elephant popsicles. We will we'll freeze uh, you know, a, a quart bucket of, of Gatorade or, or fruit uh, juice or something like that. We'll put in slices of uh, fruit with, a, uh, with a, a piece of bamboo in the middle and then uh, once it's frozen solid we'll place it out in the habitat for the elephants to find and they can step on it with their foot and break it up into smaller pieces. Uh, they'll, they'll eat the ice. So again we try to create different experiences for the different elephants based on their interests and preferences and certainly their their favorites. Everybody likes watermelons, we know that. We are very fortunate to have a dedicated staff devoted to caring for these elephants. We have a team of people that we call caregivers that oversee the day-to-day -day care of the 11 elephants residing here at the Elephant Sanctuary. And we also have a team of veterinarians that are working in many cases round the clock to make sure that the elephants are in the best health possible, diagnosing where there, there may be an illness or an issue, and trying to give these elephants the best quality quality of life available for the rest of a hopefully very, very long life. Whenever you're doing anything with elephants, whether it's through our, our training program where we ask the elephants to participate in their veterinary exams, we can ask the elephants to uh, open up their mouths, to hold out their, their trunks, to hold up their feet, rather than try to force an elephant to do something with which she is not comfortable or try to um, restrain them or, or, or sedate them. We work with the elephants on a regular ba basis. On top of all that, we have an education staff, people whose job is to help raise the public's awareness about the needs of elephants in captivity and the crisis facing elephants in the wild, which is, which is very, very uh, dire. And, and our sanctuary's mission isn't just to physically provide care for these elephants, it is to help the public learn how to care for elephants everywhere. The elephants that live here in the United States with us, the elephants that live in the wild in their, their range country. So we believe that education is really the key to creating a planet that can be 
shared in a healthy manner by humans and wild elephants and other wild animals uh, alike. The Elephant Sanctuary has a full-time paid staff of about 45 people, half of whom work with the elephants, our caregivers, our veterinarians, and then we also have a maintenance staff as well as a support services staff that deal with a lot of the administrative capabilities that go along with running an organization such as the Elephant Sanctuary. So we are standing now in our Elephant Discovery Center, which is the educational wing, or maybe we could think of it as the educational uh, flagship of the Elephant Sanctuary. So this is our museum located on Main Street here in uh, lovely Hohenwald, Tennessee. And this is where we have many visitors. We, we have field trips, we have drop-in visitors, we do special educational events where we use the interactive educational exhibits around me to teach visitors about how uh, amazing elephants are and about how crucial they are as a keystone species in their native habitats and how the, the planet needs a healthy elephant population and how elephants here in North America in some cases haven't been treated so, so kindly and that's what the sanctuary exists for, to, begin, to give elephants a place of retirement. So we would love to have more visitors come and see us at the Elephant Discovery Center. Of course, we don't have elephants here inside of our building. that, that would would not be a great idea, but um, you can find out more about our open hours and about different exhibits that we have, again, at our website at www.elephants.com, and we would be happy to, to show you around. Right now, we have our, our, our winter protocols in place, so visits are by appointment only, and again, you can make those appointments online at elephants.com. The Elephant Sanctuary is a nonprofit organization. We are recognized as a 501c3 organization by the IRS, and everything that we do is made possible through the generosity of others. We have a, a donor base that stretches around the world, and we are extremely thankful for the kindness and generosity of people who agree with our mission to give these elephants a, a life of, of retirement here at the Elephant Sanctuary. People can find out about everything that we do at our, our wonderfully named website, which is www.elephants.com. Uh, people can symbolically adopt an elephant. They can choose to symbolically feed an elephant for uh, a day. We have a distance learning program for, for schools, for, for libraries, for community groups. So people who want an education program provided by one of our educators, they can contact us there and we can use uh, the internet, web conferencing software to provide that programming for groups all around the world, which is a very favorite part of, of what we do. Another creative way that people can support us and one that is certainly topical given uh, the events of 2020 is by supporting us through the Amazon Smile campaign. You can choose the Elephant Sanctuary as one of your designated recipient organizations and when you do your online shopping as we are all so prone to do now, you will be helping the Elephant Sanctuary. And so ends our story about a pile of old donated Christmas trees in Teleco Village that completes a 250 mile journey to a small Tennessee town in order to feed and entertain one of planet Earth's magnificent animals.